The forgotten Second World War felt wall insulator that tripled heat retention was one of those battlefield innovations that never made headlines, yet quietly kept thousands of soldiers alive. And before we get into the engineering behind it, let's take a minute to set the stage, because this is where most people, honestly, underestimate just how critical these improvised systems were. During the winter campaigns of 1941 to 1944, units on both the eastern and western fronts reported more casualties from exposure than direct combat. Frozen trenches, collapsing dugouts, and shelters that bled heat faster than they could produce, it forced soldiers to rethink insulation from the ground up. In those moments, survival wasn't about factory-made gear or perfect conditions. It was about grit and improvisation. Crews stripped uniforms, repurposed supply sacks, raided abandoned barns, and used anything capable of slowing heat loss. What they found, often by accident, was that layers of compressed felted material not only blocked drafts, but trapped warm air so effectively that even primitive shelters suddenly held heat three times longer. And the best part? This wasn't some cutting-edge industrial product. It was wool, hair, fibres and fabric scraps beaten, soaked, compressed and dried into a simple but unbelievably effective wall liner. Once soldiers realised how powerful this was, they built entire winterized positions around it. Now, let's get into the real mechanics of why this forgotten World War II felt wall insulator mattered so much. The key principle was density without rigidity. Traditional insulation in military field structures, straw, bark, moss, bundled branches, worked well enough, but they leaked air and shifted as the shelter settled. Felt, on the other hand, locked its fibres into a dense mat. Warm air heated by a stove or even body heat sank into the microscopic gaps between the fibres and stayed there. The material was heavy enough to stop cold draughts, yet flexible enough to press tightly against log walls, earth walls or the interior of bunker frames. Some German and Soviet engineers recorded temperature differences of 20 degrees or more simply by lining the interior with a double layer of felted wool panels. This wasn't luxury. This was survival. One thing serious historians sometimes forget is that felt during the war wasn't always the smooth uniform sheet you might think of today. Many field-made panels were rough slabs created by soldiers who had nothing more than buckets, snow and manual pressure. Units soaked fabric scraps or raw wool, stomped or rolled them together until fibres fused, then dried the slabs by the heat of a field stove or even body warmth. When fixed to interior walls using branches, wire or wooden pegs, those slabs acted like a primitive but shockingly efficient thermal blanket. Ah, understanding how to recreate this today is more than just a historical curiosity. It's, well, practical survival knowledge. If you're building a cold-weather shelter, whether it's a log cabin, a trench dugout, or even a tarp shelter reinforced with brush, you can recreate the same effect using modern or improvised materials. The steps are quite simple, really. Create a dense layer, ensure it has enough mass to slow airflow, and press it tightly against the shelter wall to remove any gaps. 
You know, you can replicate this World War II method using wool blankets, old clothing compressed between two layers of canvas, or even natural fibres like dried grass woven tightly and then compacted. The goal is to make a single mat with no loose air channels. Historical tests, interestingly enough, showed that even a one-inch layer of compacted felted material could reduce wood wall heat loss by more than half. Another detail worth noting is how soldiers position the panels. They didn't just hang them loosely, oh no! They fitted them like an interior shell. For example, in Soviet frontline Zemlyankas, the felt was often placed behind a thin wooden interior wall. This trapped the warm air in a pocketless, layered system. The felt prevented drafts, and the wooden planks prevented moisture from reaching the insulation. The combination dramatically increased comfort and kept stoves burning far more efficiently. You can replicate this in a modern off-grid shelter. Press your felted insulation directly against the main wall, then fix a thin barrier, plywood, planks or even stretch fabric, over it. This creates a controlled thermal envelope instead of, well, an unpredictable, drafty mess. It's also worth highlighting just how adaptable this method was. Winter troops in the Carpathians padded their dugouts with horse blankets and even compressed horse hair. German mountain units used wool-lined tarps between stacked stones. Partisans in the Balkans lined cave walls with felt made from shredded uniforms. All of this worked because the principle was the same trap warm air in dense fibres, stop wind penetration, and keep the shelter's interior temperature stable. If you take anything from this guide, let it be that density and continuity matter more than perfection. From a survival standpoint, this knowledge, well, it gives you an edge. If your shelter feels cold before you add more firewood or build a bigger stove, line the walls with a dense, insulating layer. Old rugs, wool layers, carpet scraps or packs of compressed natural fibres will outperform loose materials every single time. And if you want to go full W. Dufus style practicality, create modular panels you can remove, dry and reinstall. That's exactly what frontline units did when condensation inevitably built up. The reason this forgotten W2's technique deserves a second life is because it bridges history and practicality. It shows how soldiers under extreme pressure solved a problem that still challenges anyone living or camping in cold environments. It fits perfectly into the warfield survival approach because it's grounded in real field craft, not theory. And when you apply it, whether in your cabin, your bushcraft camp, or your emergency shelter, you'll feel the difference instantly. If you learned something new, make sure to subscribe, share this guide with fellow history buffs, and keep exploring the overlooked survival innovations that shaped the outcome of the war and still matter today.